Hello! I am, uh, Beak Supreme. Uh, people know me by my... <laughs> people know me as Christian Noggle. Um, I am the, uh, the force behind Beaklebotics. It's spelled B-E-A-K-L-E-B-O-T-I-X. And this is for the Beaklebotics YouTube channel. This is a project I'm working on. I just gotta check my camera again. Make sure I'm in a field of view. And let's see how much does that capture. No, oh, that should be good. <coughs> Okay, yes, I'm Beak Supreme, and this is a project I'm working on for the Beak Robotics YouTube channel. This is the lighting system for my Raspberry Pi box. Well, actually, my uh, SNES Pi box. Um, I use a um, Pi box. Uh, the SNES Pi box consists of multiple Super Nintendo game cartridges, of which, like this, um, this I cut out, uh, just an update on this, uh, from the last video you may have seen, uh, I basically just glued these down and all that and got it ready and it fits the Raspberry Pi just fine. Slightly loose, uh, because I intend to paint it and the paint will take up some space. Here I cut out a notch for the, uh, USB, any USB plugs, maybe a little bit too big. I haven't notched out anything for Ethernet yet because I haven't used that. Notched out for the power. Uh, as you might see, notched out for the power for the SD card. Uh, and for the HDMI, as always, I do these a little bit too big. Okay, <clears throat> now my lighting system. I, in my last video, I think my last video, I was showing you how um, I was going to use. Um, uh, dip sockets uh, for microchips, little microcontrollers and all that, uh, and wire that up. Well, that's a little too complex. I found an easier solution and uh, take an IDE cable here or any type of ribbon cable. This one here is a floppy uh, floppy drive cable. It has 34 pins total, which is 17 uh, rows or, or uh, columns or how you want to do it. Uh, you can only realistically get six LEDs on here because of the size for these uh, five millimeter LEDs. Um, if you were to do three millimeter you could probably get maybe eight on here. Um, the, you can put them a little bit closer together but they kind of they kind of interfere with each other. Um, this is probably the closest you can realistically get them. But, anyway, now I have a certain type of wiring here. That's why the pins are spaced, uh, or the LEDs are spaced the way they are. And, <clears throat> now this is an IDE cable here. Uh, it, it's 40 pins, um, also known as ATA33, ATA66, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's all the same. This one here is an older cable, you can tell by its design, that I had um, taken and uh, just wound it up uh, or bundled it up for aerodynamics uh, because of you know, case fans and to kind of keep this out of my way. And I'm trying to be careful not to cut the cable um, as I'm cutting this. Um, you might ask why well, I'm not using scissors. Well, that's because sometimes you can't always fit them in there. Right, take your ribbon cable. Now, uh, I, I did an update on this. Okay, and you take an LED. And we got this box here. This came um, last week. And what color do we want to use? All right, let's get one that we have not seen yet, that most people have not seen, and that is pink. Um, not a very common color for LEDs. Make sure I got my pin here. I believe it is this way. I'm going to take our little coin cell battery. And where did that go? Where did my little coin cell battery go? Oh, I know I got it here somewhere. Crap. Oh! Ah, here it is. I'm 
little table. Okay, I'm letting my soldering iron heat up. And that's not it. There we go. Oh. Surely this would be working. You know, I will just test it on this one. Circuit's working. That's weird. This one works, right? Yeah, it works. Ah, here's pink LED. Nice red color. Now, why is it not working on oh, this? Yes. Okay, <coughs> scratch that one. What I'm going to do is put this back in here. I'm going to have this. Okay, we get the long toward me and hold this. I'll show you why these are spaced out the way they are. Pick a lady there. Oh, the ribbon came off. I want to show you how to do this project. I'm going to do it with a different ribbon cable. This here is floppy cable. Okay. Now, I want you to see this setup that I got. Turn out the lights. Uh, well, first of all, I got different rows, and I'm going to explain this. You wonder, you might wonder why they're split like this. There's a reason why. It's how the wiring turned out. I got a positive and uh, a negative for these things. Here is the positive right here. Here's the negative right here. I'm going to solder wire on these to make these easier to deal with. Here's the positive again and the negative again. Two different sets of LEDs. Notice when I put the battery on these different wires here, get different results. Now these are on. These are ultraviolet, 380 nanometer. These are on, but this battery doesn't have enough power to run them. So that's why they're not working effectively. But I'll let you go ahead and see this. Here is the uh, the ultraviolet 380 nanometers. Now this is not what 380 nanometers normally looks like. It's just not enough power from the battery to run it. Okay. Now here's my white and uh, and right here. Now this battery has enough power to run these. <coughs> and you see these are wide angle, 130 uh, degree angle white LEDs here and there's a positioning system. Um, you see this LED here, I could take it out of there and plug it into another place and there's no power. You plug it into the next spot over and there is power. What it is, is these are divided up. Every odd number pin going across is on one circuit uh, and that's what operates the odds right here, and then e and then every even uh, number pin going across here is operated by this circuit. And they're all tied in together. Now you can operate all uh, all of them at the same time, and I'll show you what that looks like. I got my uh, power supply here. Just going to test to make sure this is all good. Um, Yo, yeah, yeah. This, now, this this power supply is the same voltage as that little battery, but it's just got a lot more amperage. You see how much brighter that is. And they get hot because, for some reason, I got too much amperage in that. It's 7 watts. And it really lights up the area good. 
and it's even got enough power to drive these uh, these ultraviolet. Switch that. Now you see these 380 nanometer ultraviolet. This is what 380 nanometers looks like. And it's getting a powerful effect. You can see on my shirt. Uh, you can see on other. That's uh, what I need to solder it. I need to make more videos about this. Um, oh, and just in case you wondered, it, it's right now it's October 27, 2012, at about 11:24 p.m. Okay. You notice, um, well, hot glue. This is hot glue, and it glows under uh, underneath ultraviolet. Uh, if you've ever been wanting to know what hot glue looks like under a black light, that's what it looks like right there. Once again, you can see my shirt. It uh, all this glows really good, and you can power all of these. Um, this has um, this power supply has enough power, and uh, yeah, these LEDs they, they got some yeah they're kind of warm. And okay, and let's see. What I'm gonna do is twist these all together. Put these all together. So we're combining all of them. There's still two separate circuits. And we're going to combine them all together. And here we go. Well, are they? Are they combined? I wired this up myself recently. It's not very hard to do. Just gotta follow. Um, actually, I did some of it when I was at work on my lunch break. Let's see. Yep, the ultraviolet is on. You can see a little bit of a black light effect there with a the kind of bluish color. But the white really overpowers what you could see from the ultraviolet. Uh, so you just mainly notice the white, but if you look, the ultraviolet is there because you can see the color blue, which is what the ultraviolet makes the white uh, clothing look like. Okay. <clears throat> now we can easily swap these all out. Take all of our whites. We'll put them. Oh crap! You look punk. These are our white. Um, um, wide angle. So I just gotta remember where these are. Just put these in here. there. Now we can do um, different colors if we want to. Let's say we want. Well, I got all these ultraviolet over there. 380. It's got two different color, uh, two different types of ultraviolet. I got. Um, I got 405 nanometer, which is the exact color of Blu-ray, and then I got um, 
Yeah, I got 405 nanometer, and they're they're more purple color. And then I got a 380 nanometer, which we had just seen here, and they're not as much purple color. <coughs> now I can do a pink here. This one should work better. There we go. Now you can see it on here. So if we want to, we could line up a bunch of, uh, not only line up other colors. I'm going to get one of these wide angle blue. Well, oh, just as a bit of a surprise, I got, um, got some other colors. Now I have to be careful which colors I put on the circuit because of voltages. I got my, okay, the longer wavelength, which is the lower frequency, such as red, orange, and yellow, require around 2 volts of uh, electricity. Now the shorter wavelength, the higher frequency, which is the cooler colors, such as uh, blue, green, white, ultraviolet, they uh they work comfortably around three volts or three and you know up uh, three and a half volts or whatever. Now I got something else to show you that's pretty pretty cool. Plug a few of these in. Since they're all wired up here, I don't need to be particular in which socket I plug them in. Yes. How about this? These were the most expensive LEDs that I bought. They were 49 cents each on a website called Leading LEDs. Um, and their red, green, blue color change. You'll notice they kind of look white at some point when all three colors are equally done. Now if you look inside the lens for this thing, inside there, if you look carefully in there, you'll see this little tiny microchip. Very tiny. Maybe like a millimeter or whatever. Yeah. Maybe three quarter millimeter. And it's got eight pins. It's got four on each side. You can see in there. Very, very tiny. And it controls all of these. <coughs> Little tiny microchip. It controls all of these uh, these colors here. This uh, these LEDs here, they have the this it has the um, the emitters for all three of the primary colors. You'll notice sometimes it's kind of yellow, sometimes it's kind of uh, purple or whatever. And these are just kind of neat. Um, I can put these in a Raspberry Pi box um, for anybody who would want something like that. And these are the more expensive LEDs. They're um, they're 49 cents each. The ultraviolet, uh, 405 nanometer, a little more expensive uh, than the others. They are typically um, 49 cents each. Now I'm going to get out some other ones. I'm going to show. Um, some uh, blue. No, I'm not fine. Okay, blue. Wide angle blue. Now I'll show you how colors kind of mix to uh, combine. Now I'm going to take blue and then I'm going to mix it with green and make cyan. So we're going to put the blue on our odds right here, our odd number pins. So we'll be on one circuit, and we're going to, okay, even, on, even, on, yeah. so something like this, and these are blue, just to let you know, see, blue, and these are the flat top wide angle, right here, about 130 degree viewing angle. 
very pretty blue color. This is supposed to be 470 nanometers right here. Very pretty blue color. I really like it. 470 nanometers. Okay. Now, we will take our green, which is supposed to be, I believe, I believe it's supposed to be 525 nanometers. I believe that's what this green is. 525 nanometer. Now you can't tell them apart when you're just looking like that. Put it even right there. And I'm going to mix it with... Um, put another green over here. It's too bad I have to space them like this. It would be nice to have 3 millimeter, but uh, they don't do that. Blue. On, even, on, even, on, even, on. I don't just space two in between them. Now, I'm going to take out the blue. I'm going to show you what this green looks like. 525 nanometer. This is 525 nanometer. Well, I don't know if I can get this. This is green at 525 nanometer, very common green. See a very wide uh, viewing angle there. Very pretty green, you know, it's really good. 525 nanometers. So it's a, it's a longer wavelength than the blue. Put these back in here, put the blues back in here, I'll show you the blues. Now we'll see what all uh, what all of them look like together. Okay, the blue seems to dominate in terms of pulling electricity, uh, which is disappointing. I've seen this before. And it didn't get any brighter. For some reason, the blue is very dominant in pulling electricity. The green you see is dimmer. Um, you know, I don't know what that has to do with in terms of battery power, but we've got something else. Got this power adapter. Remember how bright it made all the other ones? Now we'll see if blue still hogs this. Ah, here we go. Here's all four of them powered up. Look how bright that is. Three volts. Actually, these handle 3.3 volts. But I'm only putting three volts for, through them, but there um, but this is a lot of amperage now you notice this color is not exactly blue and it's not exactly green it's cyan and it's an equal mix of green and blue this is a cyan color now if I were to add um, sets of red in here you get white um, pull this notice I pulled that out and it's more blue pull that out and it's completely blue Okay, we take out the greens. It's completely blue. Now whenever we add, if I get plugged in, whenever we add green, see, look at my shirt. It's completely blue. Now we add a little bit of green, and you know it's a little bit brighter. Uh, we add a little bit more green. Plug it in, right? Yeah, a little more green. You know, it's just wider, but like it's it's a cyan color. C Y A N. This is how light mixed together. And you see this here. You can smell the heat coming off of those. Okay, we put our blues back. Now that blue is and these these are hot kind of. These uh, this blue is very pretty. Um 470 nanometers is a very pretty color. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. I think I'll. I think I'm going to buy more. Um, 
Now for my pie box, my Halloween pie box, um, I like to have white. I want to have white so you can see the Raspberry Pi in and of itself and see inside there the way things normally look. But then the other color I'd like to have is, well, ultraviolet. Probably a mix, maybe be maybe about two 405s and then a 380. Um, use, your, use your 380 for to get your really good black light effects. And then, <coughs> and then, um, use your, um, and then use your, uh, and then of course a 405 will give you black light effects, but it'll look a little more purple, or, well, if you can run four of them, just equal mix. Two 405s, space them, and then mix them in with, uh, some 380s. Now I'm going to show you how to do this. i got to check how much time is left on the camera. you got about 28 or 29 minute limit. Oh, well, we have to end this video here because we only got three minutes left. Um, I am Beak Supreme, and this is for the Beak Robotics YouTube channel, I'm displaying how all this works. And I'm going to show you how to wire up a little one, uh, a few more of these in the next video. Um, and uh, until next time, I am Beak Supreme, and this is for the Beak Robotics YouTube channel. Pet some.